In this tutorial, we are going to work on the basics of Angular.js by making a HTML form and validating it and uh, see ways in which it can be submitted. Okay, so we'll start off by taking this code from the official Angular.js website. What this code does is that it defines that this application is going to be Angular.js app by this directive. After that, it includes the AngularJS into a code, which I'm gonna change and uh, move to bottom of the script because that speeds up things just before the body tag ends. And I'm gonna save this file in Angular folder. Okay, so it has a basic thing that angular gives us that's the binding that's in this code already we are defining a model here and we're using that model so let's just open this up in the browser and see what happens <clears throat> okay so it's like anything that goes in here will be binded in that variable as well that we have so this is one of the most powerful features of angular the two-way data binding so now we'll move on to one of the other very important concepts in Angular, which is a controller. So first of all, we'll name our app and we'll call it form app. And after that, we're gonna make a controller for our application. A controller is a module of Angular that sits between an app, which in turn is a module, and that can govern things between a section of code so in this case I'm gonna make a ng controller here and I'm gonna call it form controller okay so now we need to make this controller so after the script tag I'm gonna include another piece of script you can have this in separate file as well I'm doing it like this so that we can see everything at once okay so First of all, we need to get an instance of this application in our code. For that, I'll have a variable and I'll use the angular.module to get an instance of our application. For that, I'll write form app here and we'll send an empty JSON array with it. Uh, why we're doing that is uh, not important for this particular tutorial. So this part skip it right now now we can add a controller to our application using the following syntax app dot controller and the name of the controller <coughs> and then we can have a function in which we'll pass scope so this variable is the one that is gonna get the binded model into your code so we need this this is dynamically injecting scope into your controller so we have it like this and now we can do stuff here so suppose you want to set your form up or do something when the website loads when what you're making loads so what you can do is have a function here ng in it and uh, let's call it um, load okay so now we need to make this function so this controller as the name suggests scope is everywhere it's inside this controller everywhere so we can make this function using scope so the syntax for doing that is scope dot load equal to function and then it goes like this now to understand the two-way binding a bit better I'll do one thing I'll change this model in our code when the program loads I'll have the model name here and I'll name it to my name Divendu so now let's see what happens when we load our application <coughs> So you see that it is already there. 
when we load a replication. So what's happening is when the page loads, uh, we go to this function and this function sets off the tone for changing the model and it reflects back in the UI. So this is one of the features that we are looking at here. So for this tutorial, we're not gonna need it. We're just gonna need an empty controller for now. And we're gonna need a form. So let's have it here. Form and we need to name that form. Uh, let's call it uh, just form, capital F. And uh, let's end it here. So we need to get rid of this line, not needed. And uh, let's keep the HR, let's keep the name and uh, copy this one, paste it here. Okay, so let the model be name and the second one be email. Okay, so we have a very small form here in which we have name and we have email. So we need to do a few things with this thing right now. So uh, let's have a button after this which is gonna be used to submit this input uh, type equal to submit and let's see what we can do with this so just after doing doing this let us go and see what happens on the UI so we have a small form here in which we have name email and we have a submit button so let me show you a couple of good properties of AngularJS here okay so we are having we have name here and the email here and the submit button and a form here so to go in basics uh, I have a directive built into uh, AngularJS that is ng disabled so we want this thing to be disabled whenever form is invalid Okay, so this will be invalid whenever form is not valid and we will have some directives in our code to define that. As of now, it will do nothing. If I run it, it will do nothing actually. It will still be enabled because we have not defined whenever form will be disabled. So if you want to have a look at it, you can go to this tutorial. Form in AngularJS. So Angular just documentation for forms. You can go through this particular code and see what does this all invalid, pristine, valid, and dirty means. So for this tutorial, I'm just gonna show you how it works. So okay, I'll have a required here and required here. So now Angular will start working on this. I can get rid of this and I can add no validate here. No validate tag uh, removes the default HTML5 validation. And the required tag will now start working and Angular will know that the form is invalid. So if I go back and uh, go to my application and refresh now, my button will be disabled. So this is a feature of AngularJS in which it understands what is the state of the form right now. If I write something here and something here, it will be enabled. As I remove it, it will be disabled. So this is how the basic validation works. But this is not all. We want to show uh, if there is some error or something. So let's do that. Uh, okay. Uh, let's have a span here. And we're going to use a special directive again. It would be ng show. Okay. So we want to show this when name of the form, name of the model. Um, this is a special variable which contains what's wrong with this particular uh, thing. So we are talking about required. So this is built into Angular and we'll have a slash span here and we can write a message name is required similarly we can go on email and write here for email that email is required 
okay we need to name these actually so the name is gonna be here as name and the email will also have a name which would be email okay so we go back and uh, refresh so it is required as you type anything in it it goes away the error so let's uh, get a step ahead into the validation which we can do by adding another span here with email and you can simply type email here and you can say email is not valid this is built into angular and there are a lot of so these features that are built into angular you need to see the documentation for that okay its type has to be email and then when we go to this page and refresh it it will show me that the email is not valid if i get rid of this email is required and when i finally write a proper email then it goes away and similarly with name i can write my name and then i can submit the form now let us look at another property of angular that you can use while trying to submit a form that is um, you know about uh, the binding right now so if i have after the form something like this name and something like this email so what it will do for us is uh, i can reload it whatever i write here i'll get down whatever i write here at this whenever it becomes valid it will get down so this is how it's gonna work right now but let's talk about how we are going to submit this form we don't want to i mean this is a very small form so we have a couple of fields here but in larger form we may have 20 fields so we need a better way to handle a form okay so let's just do one thing let's change the models let's say the model is data dot name and data dot email okay we don't need to change this part because it is accessing them by name not by email and we don't need to change anything else so that makes our code modular and instead of using name and email here we are going to use data and see what happens go back refresh so when i write my name here you can see that it's converting the models into json now we just need to add a dot before defining the model and it does this and if i write my email and it does this so you can submit this thing to your backend using ajax or normal submit whenever you want this is how it operates suppose you would just have a form in which you have password and confirm password you want to send one of them you don't want to send both of them so you will append model to like this for password you will have data dot password in ng model <clears throat> and for confirm password you will have ng model as just confirm password and you can implement your logic to check if these two are equal but when it will come down to submission you will just submit data and it will not have uh, this confirm password so i'll end this tutorial here and uh, i hope you got to learn something from this the angular js framework is very powerful this is just a beginning into it you're gonna have to look into a lot of documentation it really makes our job easy in the next tutorial we'll be looking at making an infinite scroll with angular js thank you